This is the best post patch defense to use a Madden 24 right now. Got him! The fuck? It's just down the run. I shut him down. Shut him down. It's instant sacks. Bro, why is it, dog? And interceptions all game. So if you want to see what brand new defense I'm using in results like this, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video can once again be found in my brand new Chicago Bears offensive and my most recently updated Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. Today I'm using the Houston Texans as I want to use some of the wild card playoff teams that I am somewhat rooting for that might not make it out of the first round. And I just so happen to be playing the exact same red hot Cleveland Browns team, so whoever wins this game is guaranteed to win this weekend because I have that type of power. But before I get into it, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more videos like this please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button and let me know in the comment section the formation i'll be using all game on defense is still the 3-3 odd as i had already started using this defense several weeks ago only now i will have to make a few changes since the latest patch the biggest being the new fatigue penalties that affect any player that's a cornerback or a safety when they are blocked by a lineman or even a tight end which is aimed at destroying the smaller meta defenses like the db fire 2 and spinner blitzes that have been unrealistically effective for the last several matches but if you're watching this video, you probably already know that. I'm going to run this defense just like I did before the patch with only a few small adjustments to account for these changes, which I will show in a minute. But the scheme I already put out is just as effective as it was before the patch. So if you guys want to see a full breakdown that I made about this defense, I'll have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. So stick around for that. For my coaching adjustments, the most important ones are to set your zone coverage to match for certain coverages in the scheme and also to set your auto alignment to base so that I get to choose whether or not my opponent can read my coverage. But the biggest changes will come my substitutions. I still want to put my fastest cornerback in the slot for when I decide to blitz as this player will get a lot of pressure and I'm also going to want to still put my best linebacker at this defensive end spot here as this spot will mostly be dropping into coverage the only real change is what I do with my two linebackers in the middle of the field as this is the area that is most flexible and I will change my personnel based on what my opponent likes to do on offense if they are run heavy I will usually keep both linebackers in the game and make no adjustments and if they are pass heavy I will replace them both with safeties but since I don't know what my opponent likes to do I'm just going to replace one of them with my fastest and best safety in Adrian Amos at 90 speed and leave a linebacker in the other spot as my 87 speed Brian Cashman giving me the best of both worlds. The best plays to use my audibles are the cover six zone which is a fully matching hybrid defense that is good against the run and pass. The cover two man which is my best man coverage pass defense but is also weak against the run so I will only use this if I know my opponent has to pass. I use the pinch zero for man blitzing and the overload three press for zone blitzing but they are the exact same blitz. And for my fifth and active play I will choose the cover four drop. I choose the cover four drop because this is my best base defense against the run and pass so i will use it the most as cover for safeties will always play the run first as long as you don't guess pass making this the best run defense in the game and it's also one of the best pass defenses for multiple reasons number one it's one of the hardest plays to score one play touchdown against in the entire game trust me i know as calling this defense is designed to limit big plays and keep everything in front of you it also has the most zone coverage defenders out of any defense in the game as it only rushes three and the other eight defenders tend to cover the entire field making it very hard to pass the real design weakness is outside underneath the cornerbacks as they are designed to drop back, often letting short routes get open underneath, but I'll show you an adjustment to take that away in a minute. But first I want to focus on my run defense, as this defense starts out with a very poor run defense alignment. The best run defense alignment in the entire game in my opinion is the 3-4 odd, and I can create that exact same look with this defense simply by bringing down this outside cornerback into the area of where the cover 4, 3-4 outside linebacker would be. I also like to pitch my defensive line by hitting the d-pad to the left and down which closes up any inside run lanes and I will also spread my linebackers by hitting the d-pad to the left and up so that this player here who was playing a defensive end will now spread out wider and hold down this edge on the other side leaving very little opportunity to run inside or outside if i have time i can also bring down my safeties for extra run support as well giving me an identical three for odd defense look only with much better speed and coverage ability with the option to put safeties or cornerbacks at three out of the four linebacker positions as he tries to run with one of the best power backs in football on the first play and only gets a few yards he calls a hurry up and i set my defense up the exact same way only this time i add one more adjustment by hitting wire triangle and down the right stick so that i can cover the only weakness that this defense has in the space under the dropping cornerbacks as this will take away that area and also help in run defense as these defenders won't drop back like they naturally do
do with the curl flats. And nothing is open as he tries to squeeze it in a tight window. Gotcha, bitch! And we get an interception on just a second play of the game. Now on offense, I'm going to change my offensive philosophy to match the patch as well by balking up and running the ball to tire out my opponent's defense. I still think that the iForm close game that I put out for my Niners, Dolphins, Jets, and Broncos playbooks are the best, but the closest that I have in this playbook is the H close off, which is very limited in pass plays, but has all the run plays I need to dominate post patch, even against what might be one of the best defenses in Madden. So I'm going to put a backup tight end at both the fullback and the wide receiver spot to give me a total of eight players on the field that can potentially fatigue any defensive back that they come in contact with and pound the ball relentlessly until they are all red, weak, and slow. And it works perfectly as I catch him in a smaller nickel package, then call a hurry up to keep him in it until I wear his entire defensive down like a cheap suit and punch it in to take the lead. On the next series, he tries to do the same thing by coming out in a three tight end set and pounding the rock and hurry up. But after a first down and only two plays, he lets it go back to the huddle and I can see some small signs of fatigue. Post patch, I noticed that defenses don't get their stamina back very quickly despite only two plays. But this is not fatigue enough yet, so I don't really worry about it. But one of the benefits of only using one sub package safety at linebacker is that if he gets tired, I can just swap him out with another safety on the bench. So I will monitor these players' fatigue levels after every play to make sure they don't get too tired. But that doesn't happen once the entire game. Despite him trying to pound the rock with Chubb the same way, I never have to make another manual adjustment in my substitutions the rest of the game because I'm not blitzing any of the defensive backs at any point, which will fatigue them much faster if they get blocked, but all of my DBs are safe in coverage away from the linemen. As he decides to pass on the next two plays and I get him to a fourth down that he barely picks up. But I'm still not having any real fatigue issues like some of the people in my comment section as they must be using much smaller defenses than mine. I stay in cover four and hard fly on the next play and I can't help but notice that I get a lot more natural pressure from just three rushers than I should. Now that I know he has to pass, I will leave the flats alone, spread the defensive line and guest pass for better pass rush, and watch how these flats appear to man match the deeper routes. This play doesn't look like a matching cover four, but it does act like it if I don't hard flat, as hard flatting will override this. I get pressure again on the next play from the same edge rusher to get him into a fourth and 11 that of course he decides to go for, and I decide to try to get him before his receivers can get the 11 yards they need by calling the pinch zero. I don't even get the full setup in, but I still get pressure from three different defenders in his face as he throws the ball out of bounds on a curl route. Nope. Back on offense, we go back to pound the rock the exact same way as Bully Ball is back in Madden before I throw a speed out route a little bit too early, ultimately derailing my drive as I try to score in the next play instead of going for the first down only to settle for a field goal. Now of two possessions, my opponent has to pass and starts to find some space for his best pass play of the game. Then on the next play, getting his best run play of the game to get into field goal territory very fast before my pass defense steps up on the next two plays to get stops. But then I get cute and I switch over to the cover six and give up the first down, which is a coverage that I'm actually souring on from this scheme, as it's just not as good as some of the other plays in the scheme. Inside the red zone like this, I usually bulk up to the 3-4 odd, but it fails me big time as he punches it on the ground to make it a game. Damn it! From here, I decide to switch offenses to my gun normal while off close, which is another offense that I recently put out and will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. But the philosophy is the same as I see no second level defenders on the next play and continue to pound the rock for big back to back runs. I should have kept doing this though as he switches to cover three and I try to squeeze a pass in between the zones, <laughs> giving him great field position and ultimately the lead. As I come out of the 3-4 odd and it fails me again, giving me no help against his run plays and I'm starting to think that this defense just got nerfed somewhere. Now down big and he is piling on as he gets a sack on first down to push me back to second and 22 before I get to delay a game penalty to make it second and 27. Before the penalty though, I was reading cover three so I switch offenses to the gun wing slot offset as this PA replay is still my favorite cover three bomb in the game this year. I just don't know if the speed of this tight end is fast enough and to make things worse, he must know the play as he literally uses it up the seam. <laughs> as we thread the needle between three different defenders and take the lead in the half. I get the ball back after half as well, and I go right back to the I-form to pound the rock. The best way to run this stretch play is still by motioning across the tight end that I put at wide receiver, and motion snapping him once he gets outside the left tackle, so that he will help to create a wall of blockers that I just have to sprint around, as everyone gets picked up, and we get inside the red zone. From here, I keep him on the field and switch to my inside run the next two plays to finish the drive in dominant fashion to get my two possession lead back. 
But this guy doesn't go away easily. He's not going to come back on the ground, though, as we stop the run in the backfield before he checks it down over the middle to get close to a first down. And then on third and inches, I thought that he was going to run, so I sent a run blitz, and that was a mistake, as he takes a simple zig route to the house with his fastest receiver, Marquise Goodwin. Oh, you motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. Back on offense, I start to drive out with the speed out route once again, as it's really the only passing play that I like in this scheme. Before I get right back and pound the rock, as I already have over 100 yards in just 12 carries. He changes defenses and shuts me down the next play so i have to change offense as well to get him out of it and that's when i see no second level defenders once again so i run it for another big carry and another first down he switches defenses again on the next play and i don't really like to look pre-snap but i run it anyway before I decide to not try that again and switch it up and pass, only to take a huge sack to push back to a third and 15. I see these in cover three, so since I'm already on the hash mark, I work the tight end corner route under the streak to keep the drive alive before hitting the drag on the next play to get inside of the deep red zone. Oh my gosh, dog. And then finishing the drive on the ground once again. Oh my god, it's fake. Now I just have to protect my two score lead. I have two prevent defenses here. I start with the cover four, but he beats that with a corner route. So I switch to my other prevent in the cover two man as we get the stop on the very next play. The setup for this defense is to man a line so that everyone is right in front of their assignments by pressing the wire triangle button and then the RB or R1 button. Then I will user the linebacker that I put at defensive end like a linebacker in the middle of the field. I can also spread the defensive line and guess pass since I know that's what he wants to do and as long as I don't press, nothing will really get open as he gets a few yards back before I switch to cover four hard flats on third and three and he wasn't expecting that as it confuses him to hold the ball too long before throwing it out of bounds. On fourth and three I do it again and the hard flat takes everything away forcing a deep throw. He still has all of his timeouts but he clearly has accepted defeat as he doesn't even call them while I pound the rock and force him to rage quit. So that's that video. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of the schemes that I was using on offense or defense, I'll have links in them popping up on screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.